TEPCO has begun streaming live video of its Fukushima plant on the company's website. The move came in response to many requests for live images of the reactors. You're watching the live video of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. A camera was installed 250 meters northwest of the number one reactor. And this number one reactor can be seen on the near side with reactors number two, number three and number four behind it. TEPCO had until today been uploading still pictures of the crippled plant once every hour from the southern side. Now we have the live footage. The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has reported high levels of radioactive water that has accumulated in the basements of the number one reactor. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, says a water sample contained 2 million becquerels of radioactive cesium per cubic centimeter. We speculate that water affected by the reactor damage is leaking from the pressure vessel and from the containment vessel. TEPCO created a map that shows the distribution of the contaminated water in the plant buildings. It will use this to prevent a recurrence of the accident in March. At that time, three workers were exposed to radiation by stepping in tainted water. The company plans to set up a cooling system to circulate decontaminated water back into the reactors. The system is expected to be installed in July. TEPCO says it will also install equipment to purify contaminated seawater near the water intakes at the number two and three reactors. The purifier uses the mineral zeolite to absorb radioactive cesium. The company says preliminary operations will begin as early as Thursday. The utility had previously built undersea silt barriers around the water intakes to prevent highly radioactive water from further spreading into the sea. But radioactive substances exceeding government safety limits are still being detected outside the barriers. In Japan, the rainy season has started in most of the country. At the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant, heavy rainfall is increasing the volume of highly radioactive wastewater in reactor buildings and related facilities, raising the possibility that the contaminated water may flow out into the sea. Huh? What do we do now, liberal affirmative action shithead, peacenik commie fuck? What do you want to do now? This is nothing, uh. piece of cake! The contaminated water has already flooded the basements of the turbine and reactor buildings, partly due to injections of water to cool down the reactor cores. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, now says water levels are rising faster as rain pours into the badly damaged buildings. In an underground tunnel shaft of the number two reactor, the water level had risen by 8.6 centimeters over 24 hours as of Tuesday morning. The surface of the water is now only 39 centimeters below ground level, the utility speeding up work to seal the opening. The utility says a similar rise in water level has been reported from other facilities nearby. TEPCO is considering new storage sites where the contaminated water can be quickly transferred. A private Japanese think tank says the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant could cost Japan up to $250 billion over the next 10 years. The estimate is part of the Nuclear Safety Commission's ongoing survey of opinions on the disaster from nuclear experts and other specialists. Kazumasa Iwata, president of the Japan Center for Economic Research, delivered the estimate on Tuesday. He said the cost of the accident could range from about 71 to as much as 250 billion dollars. That figure includes 54 billion for buying up all land within 20 kilometers of the plant, 8 billion to compensate people in the area, and 9 to 188 billion for scrapping the reactors. Iwata said a fundamental review of the government's nuclear energy policy will be needed to fund the cleanup. He said the government could generate about $71 billion of the funds needed over the next decade by freezing research and development projects linked to the nuclear fuel cycle. And another $150 billion could come from Tokyo Electric Power Company's reserve fund and the government's budget for nuclear energy spending. The Nuclear Safety Commission plans to continue interviewing experts over the coming months, and it will incorporate ideas from other specialists in future debates on nuclear energy.
Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, has installed a new cooling system at one of the plant's crippled reactors. TEPCO says the system is aimed at reducing humidity, which has been hampering repair work. It's the first such system to be installed at the plant. The utility started operation of the cooling system at the number two reactor building on Tuesday. TEPCO has been pumping about 50 tons of water into a used fuel pool in the building every few days. The pool's, the pool's temperature is around 70 degrees Celsius, apparently re producing water vapor that is filling the building and resulting in a 99.9% .9 humidity level. The new system pumps water out of the pool. The heat exchanger cools the water before it is returned to the pool. TEPCO says it hopes the systems will lower the pool's temperature to around 40 degrees Celsius in a month. The utility wants to reduce the humidity level in the building before installing equipment to remove radioactive substances. It hopes to start operation similar system, operating similar systems at the plants number one and three reactors in June and at the number four reactor in July. The Japanese government has instructed TEPCO to immediately test more workers at the Fukushima nuclear plant for possible internal exposure to radiation. This comes after high levels of radioactive substances were found in two workers. Let's calm down. The two men worked in the central control rooms of the number three and four reactors at the plant. TEPCO says their total exposure may have exceeded the safety limit of 250 millisieverts which has been set as their ceiling amount for emergencies. The two men told the Labour Ministry that they were not wearing protective masks when a hydrogen explosion occurred on March the 12th. The Ministry instructed TEPCO to test dozens of workers who were also in the control rooms. The Ministry says these workers may have inhaled high levels of radioactive substances. TEPCO says it will follow the Ministry's instructions. A series of worker safety problems at the Fukushima Daiichi plant has already come to light. It was discovered that some workers were doing their jobs without carrying dose meters. Two female TEPCO employees were exposed to high levels of radiation that exceeded the safety limit. And on Monday, the government told the power company and its subcontractors to take thorough measures to ensure the safety of their workers. U.S. rating agency Standard & Poor's slashed its credit rating of Tokyo Electric Power Company. The agency cites huge losses and an unclear compensation plan for the downgrade. Standard & Poor's downgraded TEPCO's rating by five notches from triple B to single B+. The agency cites the utility posted huge losses for the business year ending in March and that details of the Japanese government's framework to help the company pay damages are still unclear. A company rated single B plus is considered a high risk investment. TEPCO says it is taking the downgrade seriously. The firm says it is striving to contain the situation at the Fukushima plant while it continues to streamline its business and restore its image. Meanwhile, Moody's Japan has also cut TEPCO's credit rating by two notches and says it will put the utility on review for a further possible downgrade. Defense Minister Toshimi Kitazawa says he wants robots to be added to Japan's self-defense forces equipment so they can tackle any future nuclear accidents. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, Kitazawa said 
It's ironic that U.S.-made robots were used initially after the nuclear accident at Fukushima, even though Japan is a world leader in robot technology. Kitazawa said he wants the SDF to start using robots, including unmanned helicopters, that can operate even in a highly radioactive environment. The self-defense forces should be equipped with robots and incorporate them regularly in their exercises. In the future, if an accident happens, I want us to be able to handle it on our own and also be ready to lend support to neighboring countries. For crying out loud, you're missing important plot points.